section here when I transfer it over. Okay. Yeah, so recording here, so meeting with Matt uh, from the Tech for Trade project. So Marchin here reporting on a state of the open source filament maker with PET. So we're discussing how to move forward on the open source version of the PET filament maker from Tech for Trade where Matt's team has agreed to open source that. So we're discussing how to make that happen most strategically. So Matt, what are some of your questions that I can address? All right, I'm back. Yep. Um, tell, so tell me uh, how I can address any questions you may have about uh, what open source means, how to roll it out to the world, leveraging the community, leveraging collaboration. Yeah, I guess the main thing that, um, so when I was talking last with with uh, the group of Tech for Trade is just how to um, get things out there and at the same time, uh, what I guess, uh, you know, just make sure that we're, we're having good impact with our work instead of just posting it out on the corner of GitHub and, and having it sit there. Or I guess the other thing that kind of, um, you know, we had for a little while, we had done a bunch of work that another group was, you know, kind of implying they had done, um, which was kind of frustrating to, to see, especially in the world where, you know, there's a lot of competition for funding, that sort of thing, um, you know, because, getting the stuff to happen is not cheap. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I think we can start this this discussion with documentation how how to document this effectively. So for example, if you if you ha were keeping a log or public presence on this, no one could even begin to make that claim, right? Naturally. Yeah. So so it's about working transparently and public out there. Mm -hmm. That's that's a way to um to protect your work, so let's let's take some notes here. So, um, yeah, so I tech hope it doesn't bother you if you hear clacking in the background. Yeah, no problem. L let me just take some notes here. Is, is share documents with so Tech for Trade, Filament Maker. Do you have a name for the Filament Maker? Or? Uh, we've been calling it the Thunderhead. Thunderhead. Head. Thunderhead. Cloud. It went. When I started making it, it was um, it was bolted to the wall in my little teeny tiny shop with thin plywood walls, and the whole room would resonate mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. the motor. Um, so, like, it was super loud. Um, turns out, it was the room, not the uh, machine itself. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but the name Thunderhead has that. stuck. What's that? The name of Thunderhead yeah. has stuck. Yeah. Just kind of stuck. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so let me um, share this document with you here. So if you go, uh, can you see the link? Uh, uh, right there. The, uh, so go into the chat box there. Yeah, let me open the chat box. Okay, there's the link. Got it. 3D build instructions. Yeah, let's title it Thunderhead Filament Maker. Do you have a Tech for Trade logo you can put on the bottom of this document? Like I have Open Source Ecology down there. So is your board pretty much excited about the prospect of open source or did you kind of have to pull teeth or how did that work for you? No, I think so. Um, people are, people are excited about getting it out there. 
um, it's just more that with this kind of past frustrating experience of like we were trying to collaborate with this other group and it really kind of just felt like we got burned is that hard. is that the current state like that that group uh, pretty much is on its own or how what's your current relationship to that yeah um yeah we, we aren't really actively collaborating with them although like we're up on their website as a partner of theirs and like i just had them pull my picture down off of their website site as a as a like a kind of individual partner um days ago like you know so it's just kind of weird because like i like <laughs> kind of shared everything with them and then like you know just uh anyhow it was, it was kind of weird so. uh did they did you raise that issue with them or did they is it an antagonistic relationship or did it uh or, well, or they're not even knowing i mean i don't know i think basically like things didn't really turn out the way uh we had ex it kind of anticipated yeah and so you know it was just like oh so <laughs> if that's what we're gonna get uh you know it was it was more like, like i think that kind of led us to like okay well maybe we should just you know wait until everything's totally ready to go and then just say okay here's what we have here's what we have done you know i think it was like concern about getting you know beat to the punchline in the last few yards um yeah concerns like that um but you know i honestly i think kind of now i i i think we're all kind of over that um maybe Maybe not in the sense that when we think about it, we, we are just happy, but, um, uh, you know, or, or just laugh it off. But um, in the sense that we're just like, whatever, we're just moving forward. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I think now really more the, the focus is, okay, so we get all our stuff out there. One, how do we make sure that... Um, Yeah, we're, we're doing the things that cause impact, and then I, I think kind of I would, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm not as much on the funding side of things, but um, I would imagine part of part of like having that impact and demonstrating that we're having that impact is, um, you know, definitely linked to going out and searching for funds, and you know, if you if you can't can't uh you know if if basically when when groups say well you've been working on this for a long time what impact have you had and you're like yeah you know how do we make sure that that um uh we can demonstrate that we're having that impact you know so mm -hmm. other groups will be using the work and having impact and to me it just seems like well we can just point you know to what we're doing and to what other groups are doing and say yeah we've had you know impact in multiple you know ways one way is by allowing other groups to have impact um, but I, i don't know what your uh, kind of feel is on and i'm sure you've kind of gone through similar sort of um okay well let's let's um... oh, no but you've thought you've thought about how, how to how to stay afloat and how to have impact with the work that you're doing um i'm curious to Yeah. Okay. Um, well, first of all, what's um? I mean, there's many issues. To, let's do one by one here. So, first of all, what is the existing documentation that you have on this that is public? Technical documentation and publicity. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's Can you... there's stuff on. There's some code on GitHub. There's some. There's designs on Weevolver. There are designs on GrabCAD in the partner space. It's kind of weird. So on GrabCAD, like, can you put uh, links into that so we can we can document this here? Because I mean, can you put links into the working document? You can you can edit that. Uh, have you? Oh. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. 
Now you can. Uh, can you? No. No, you can't. Let me just try this again. Here. The other thing, sir, I should have said this a while ago. I'm actually supposed to be in three places right now. Okay. Um, because of just things went crazy. So, okay. um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go. Okay, let's spend, let's spend like, uh, let's do, uh, you know, total half an hour today. Let's do that. Um, yeah, is that good for you? Does that work? Yeah, actually, if, if we could even cut it, because we're already like 10 minutes in, yeah. if we could cut it to 20 more minutes. Yeah, yeah. Probably, I mean, I'd be yeah. happy to, like, I think when I get back to the U.S., so far as we've been talking, right, you know, with, with everybody on the team, a big part of my focus is going to be getting this documentation updated and so on. But so, so like, one of the things that everybody's been saying is, hey, Let's get it up and, and out there, but it seems like it's more than just the documentation, you know, it's like getting our story out there and, you know, kind of all the comms side of everything as well. Right. Um, right. So... Just got, I mean... Mm -hmm, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, so suggestions on that, I mean, so you, I mean, you definitely have to create a story about it. I mean, how much have you been documenting as far as the development? Do you have a blog? Is there a blog for um, trade? We don't have. I mean, I would say until just a few days ago, we've had almost zero comms presence, unfortunately. Okay. So, so no social media either. Like we have a Twitter account. Um, like we might have a Facebook page. Again, I'm not. I'm. You know, I've spent my time like trying to get the diameter sensor to read diameters is, you know, the main thing. So, um, yeah, I have I haven't been actively involved in that stuff. Unfortunately, I mean, I should be. I How many more people you have on working on a team on the filament maker? So we got sensor. There's I me. Mean, I do all the development technical side. Then we've got the director. And uh, another consultant who helps with uh, kind of strategy and planning. And then now we've got a, another person who helps in Nairobi with the local uh, sort of business management, which is with the like um, digital blacksmiths thing. Is there a business um, that's already. Um up and self-sustaining or not is, is that one of that business is that business self-sustaining at present it's just starting okay yeah literally, literally like we um we kind of had to, went through a reshuffle um just in the past month maybe two months i guess um so yeah i would say it's it's I, w I wouldn't even quite say launched. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like okay. Literally three of our first couple of microscopes last couple of days. Uh, do you have somebody that can help you do a website? I mean, basically a proper website but, where... Yeah, so that actually just went up. So the, the, the business lead in... Um, do you have a link for that? No, 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 let me grab that for you just a sec. Because the idea, the idea of the working document was to, you can also edit that. You can post things in there. In the Google yeah, Doc. I'm trying to paste actually a GitHub link in there. Oh wait, let's see. Let me connect you with my. Yeah, it's a view only right now. I think I have to get a little more permission. Can you? Can you? Uh, no, you should be good. Can you refresh? Anyone on internet? Oh, maybe. Just refresh. Yeah.
thoughts in there. So I think, so I'm not a big social media person my, myself, so that's why I'm a little, I don't even really like carry a cell phone around, so. Uh-huh. You're getting ready yeah. ready to build your own Pi phone, though? You know, a Raspberry <laughs> Pi telephone? Okay. Anyway, I, I'm thinking about it, yeah. Um, that's the cool. setup right now? Wow, that's that's um, a little cluster of... Are you able to make these replicable just like you show in this picture? Like, pretty replicable to that to that level? As far as the printers? What, uh, what, what um... I'm looking at digital what? blacksmiths. Okay, let me jump back to the. So there's a picture with a bunch of printers in yep. the page. Yeah, yeah. The, so yeah, so that's. Um, those are like. Uh, let's see here. We. Um, I built four of those for. Um, uh, yeah, for like this fundraiser, we wanted to show off some of the printers and then send a couple on here to to um, Nairobi. Um, and so, yeah, so one of those now is here with the diameter sensor on it um, and printing with the PET. Um, yeah. So you guys are uh, working yeah, on that I mean, ethical filament, Mark? So the ethical filament mark, it's, that's been a little bit, um, I would, for so long there, uh, there, you know, like we, we've been working on being able to make filament that, right. you know, that mark just kind of has been on hold until, you know, I think we kind of jumped on it thinking we'd get through the filament process a lot faster than we did um so now that you know you know now that we're starting you know to print yep. with the recycled filament like all, all that kind of stuff's gonna gonna be coming back up yep um, okay the zen queries tech a tech for trade that goes to your strategy guy or say again the, the... yeah well, well that, that'll go to that'll go to uh William, who's the director, and usually then that gets forwarded back onto me. Um, yeah. Depending on what the inquiry is, I think now that our team has expanded, um, yeah, that might might change a little bit. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as uh, so, do you have any, any plans to start regular presence where you just simply, uh, yeah, I mean, blog or social media where you're showing the work, and therefore that's part of the storytelling that that you do yeah. in order to get people of course involved and interested or or just even prove primacy i mean if you just leaving a paper trail mm -hmm. behind yes it. yes exactly so i think that that's now that we have salam working on those things you know it's um now that now that she's working on those things yeah i think there's going to be like a regular newsletter going out or sort of blog about like, hey here's what's here's what's happening um, you know, like as we put together these first couple of microscopes, there'll probably be a post going up about those, mm -hmm. um, you know, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Whereas in the past, where in the past, you know, it's because it's really for years kind of been me in the garage working on this stuff, and everybody saying, "When's it going to be done yet? When's it going to be done yet?" Um, you know, it's like stopping to. Uh -huh. or whatever. Did you? So you you were doing this work, and then you you got in touch with some of these foundation people who who. No, uh, Tech for Trade's been supporting the work for years. Uh huh. Yeah, and it's just you know it's one of those things where it's just been a really hard nut to crack. Um, so, but we've been working in Mexico and Ecuador. Colombia, Ghana, Tanzania. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we've done so the printers. The printers have been much easier to do than the extruder, by far, in terms of you know getting them getting them working. Sort of thing. Uh, so mainly we've been focused, you know, you know, in terms of our field work, we've been focused on on getting printers out there. 
while I've been like you know, so I go and help people get set up with printers, and then I go home and continue development on the extruder sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So have you actually? Who's working on a FreeCAD files? I mean, is that you too, or? Well, so so I was doing free. I don't know if you saw in Weevolver there are some really old FreeCAD files up there. Um, the no, issue that we had was that it took me so much longer to draw with FreeCAD than um, with SolidWorks. You know, I, I kept, like, I don't know what would happen with, you know, but like I would say, like, get to a certain extrude I needed to do or something like that, and, you know, maybe I didn't understand the way FreeCAD liked to have things, you know, like the end of an extrude at a plane or something. You know, there were certain certain things that I wasn't used to in FreeCAD that just made it so difficult for me that we just uh, switched to SolidWorks to, with the goal being, you know, like, when we get the design somewhat stable so it's not changing every day. Yep. You know, then, I, then I do a, you know, you know, so I would, I would think, like, in terms of, you know, again, and this is just speaking from, from the perspective of if I'm the only one doing the design work, um, I could do it much faster if I had stay got to a release and then did pre-cad designs of that release. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I haven't. So I haven't worked with pre-cad for a, a few, when we early early on when we did the pre-cad. I was actually writing Python scripts that would do all of the drawing. Right. Um, for the printer at least, so that because one of our huge issues is that when you go to a different area, all of the stock materials are slightly different. So you can't just use static STLs because they won't fit with the fasteners or with the square, you know, the, the structural metal. Um, so that's why we just made these scripts so you could just adjust some yeah. dimensions and the is that on a Weevolver site or no? Yes, that is. Um, yeah, and like I said, those printer designs are. There's a link to the newer printer design. Um, the GitHub thing, the retro RETR 3D yeah. release V0.1.0, is that the actual FreeCAD and plus scripts? The GitHub, um... Uh, Mafu, is that you? Mafu, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Yeah, this, I mean, it's just there's so many things. Like, we need to have, like, a tech for trade GitHub account. Oh, yeah, so this... Yeah, these are the Python scripts that uh, run... Uh, FreeCAD to make all the different parts of the printer, um, and that has been we've totally stopped working on that. Um, mm -hmm. Just so that that printer design was it focused on like using absolutely as much e waste as possible, um, which while it made the printer very low cost, it was, you know, like, I mean, it was set up so you could use, like, on the same, let's say on the y-axis, you could use a 10 millimeter smooth rod and a 6 millimeter smooth rod in the same axis, you know, it would adjust all of the 3D printed parts to make it all work. Um, so you could just go get a bunch of scrap and, and the FreeCAD would handle the rest. But it just became really cumbersome in terms of production, you know, like you had to be super, super organized or else you'd end up with 3D print parts that didn't match the printer you thought you were building sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, it, I mean, it had some mechanical issues, so we just kind of bagged that design and went for the other one, which has been much easier. It uses less e-waste, though, that's kind of the balance of that Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, 
let's see. So we don't have a lot of time left here, but um, what sh what should we do then? Um, I mean, so you're planning yeah, just, on. I'm wondering about. Uh, well, it seems like you do a lot of. I would be curious about hearing about. Um, yep. Okay, with your stuff, how do you? It, it seems like you do a lot of workshops. Yes. I'm guessing is yes. potentially a way to to generate some income and yep. also get the word out there. Um, yeah. I don't know if you have other kind of strategies that you use. Uh, right now, we're basically. I mean, right now, most of our revenue is coming from the workshop model. So basically, we do extreme builds over a weekend. We build a machine of some sort. So the idea here would be that we streamline and document everything and create it into an event experience where people can actually be building these. And I think that's a huge scalable revenue model. Uh, and that's that's what we're working on developing. Basically, create a franchise, uh, a franchise model where we're training the people who are running these workshops. We can only run so many of them. Right now, I've been running one maybe every month or every other month because uh, it's a lot of work. But once you refine it, you can make it a regular product offering and refine the publicity around that such that you have a viable enterprise. And then you can be teaching that to your people, whether it's it's your digital blacksmiths or another kind of immersion program. Like for us right now, we're going to do a, a much deeper immersion program where the people who come to us learn to do both like the 3D printers, the micro tractors, CNC torch tables and other products and the micro house and CD CD go home and aquaponic greenhouse like we're going to teach people through an immersion program how to do the whole thing so there's revenue from education and from running workshops uh -huh. so so think of it as a university i mean university is a well-proven business model right teaching uh -huh. so, yeah. so that's that's the direction we're going now we're mm -hmm. being very deliberate about not getting into manufacturing we're not a manufacturing organization we're we're an education organization we also happen to produce things but that comes through education, and that's a totally different ballgame. It's about replication, it's about teaching and open source, as opposed to you go out there and just make dumb factory workers, right? We're creating yeah. very smart producers, so we focus on the education aspect uh, in order to transition to a different kind of economy where it's not about just consumerism, but it's about people really synergistically working with, with production to have that happen in mm -hmm. micro factories in local communities. So. So the idea here is a micro fact. I mean, we could collaborate on the open source micro factory model where I think the, the filament maker and a 3D printer can be a core to that kind of operation. I mean, you can do a lot of different products there. You can talk about drones, robotic arms, your microscopes, <laughs> everything. Yeah. It goes on and on. That's the, 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 yeah. yeah. That's the thing that's, I think, really exciting about it. Once you get the filament and the printer yeah. down. Yep. That's right. So it's it's a very exciting thing, and I would definitely suggest. I mean, pretty much um, claiming the space space of that, you know, educate people about. It. I mean, claim first of all, start publicizing this stuff. Start you know start documenting all that you have done, and then the history will kind of write itself around that. And and by by going open source, if you use a license like Creative Commons share alike you're saying everyone also has to keep the work open so it also helps you you're not just throwing it out for nothing but the improvements that you get from the community also come back to you and you can improve your own business model with that yeah. that's the idea yeah yeah so that's i mean that's the nutshell of, of this revenue model that i think i think is huge i mean that's that's what we're pursuing we don't have the results as far as having taught and scaled the operation yet Pretty much myself and Katerina, my partner here, who does the Open Building Institute, that's pretty much a spin-off of, of open source ecology in terms of it uses a lot of its rapid build techniques plus machinery. But beyond that, we have to distribute this work to others for this to, to this movement to grow. So, yep. And that's where the open source comes in. I, I think uh, anybody who tries to uh, save the world, so-called, or change the world, I mean, you've got to be open source in order to scale it. Uh, so that the uptake yeah. happens both from independent players and also from a very deliberate program of making it happen. Because what you'll see is that it's hard to make it happen. You really have to nurture that process in order to facilitate others doing that. Like, for example, with me and a brick press, I thought, you know, people will be starting businesses left and right with a brick press that we've developed that now costs us 5000 in materials for a, and a competitor costs $52,000, right? I thought as soon as we get that out... 
you know people will be starting hundreds of businesses around it but it's not it's like like there's not a lot of entrepreneurs true entrepreneurs out there so i think it's very useful that we nurture those kinds of people as much as possible to help that and, and create the people who are future developers like from the workshops we find a lot of people who are developers uh, word gets out like that so i just want to keep doing more workshops and and hopefully by next year have a few people that are also doing that if our immersion training program succeeds so i mean that's something you can you can definitely fund through the nonprofit sector as far as training workshops and then you know collaborate with us and collaborate with all the open players who who are respectful and and respect the fact that you've you've got the credit for doing that like we would say you know design based on this you know you'll be credited um that's part of the ethic that people share and share alike Yeah, it'll be interesting. So I guess the the some of the um, on the training, I, I wonder even what tech we should have. Since say I live in Seattle and we do a lot of our work in Nairobi, uh -huh. and you know, I, I, frequently I, I you know like kind of daydream about say, shoot, we should be doing these trainings, you know, in the U.S. or other developed areas as well um well absolutely i mean i think you can run okay. workshops where i mean if this is a serious product like i mean after all you have to have a product if it's a serious product i mean it's highly relevant to the united states so you can use that as a way to fund the further work like for example through some of that work you can track the interest you know you raise the raise the interest in america and people find out about it and and people love supporting Africa projects, you know. So they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I'll fund this for Africa," and that's how you'll find more more interest in more people. But in Africa, I mean, it'll be training the digital blacksmiths. Here would be for others who just want to have this thing and and start their own businesses too. I mean, it, it really the digital blacksmith applies to Africa as much as America. I think. I mean, yeah, yeah I agree. I mean, you know, I I really appreciated when you said. Yeah, we're looking into very similar business models <laughs> and the yeah. idea of, you know, it's like it trains some other people so that they can start replicating, you know, and this gets out there. Yeah, uh, a franchise model, which means you have to get down your process, your marketing, and your package, your product package in a very refined way. So, yeah, yeah. And also collaborate that, with people like us. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what, yeah exactly, uh, um, and so actually when I was talking with William about about this, uh, you know, like hey, we, you know, we may probably part of getting it out there is actually making it more collaboration and you know helping it spread. Absolutely. Uh, so of course, of course, you know, it's like well, open source ecology makes a lot of sense to to work with you guys on on that. Um, so hopefully, when I get. Uh, a bit more time. Things are really crazy here. I mean, uh, just you know, like I extended my time here because you know we just didn't have enough time to finish all the technical side. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the, so so I think some next steps for us, you know, in terms of say like the document you got going there is also, um, you know, if, especially if you take a look at what we have online, it's obvious that we don't have. In terms of our documentation, we don't have the structure that we need um, for the, you know, I mean, even, I would say for me, like, even say versioning, <laughs> you know, down right. to like nitty gritty things like that, right. you know, are, are new to me. Um, and it could be really helpful in that documentation process to get some pointers. Well, from, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the wiki, the world's largest successful project is a wiki. That's Wikipedia. I mean, start a wiki. A wiki has actual versioning. You, you actually can version files on the wiki itself. Uh, like we use Media Wiki. If you upload a file, the, the old file is kept there and you see the whole revision history. So, I mean, start with a wiki like Media Wiki. I think that's a great tool. Um, anyone can edit. Is that Media Wiki? Yeah, yeah, Media Wiki. It's, it's like Wikipedia. That's the wiki they use. And um, it's a high power product. <laughs> Can't dispute the one of the world's largest organizations, right? <laughs> Using that product. No doubt. Yeah. Okay, great.
So I, unfortunately, I'm going to have to get yeah. Ronan. Um, but what, what I'm looking forward to is moving forward on the collaboration, hopefully getting the – where I could really use some of your help is, yeah, getting – making sure that documentation is, is kind of in the right usable format so that it can spread. Um, and then – I think we should also be looking at how can we collaborate on, say, getting this out there. If you know, if it's something that you guys are interested in helping us spread and well, of course. Yes. I mean, we want to we want to use it. Um, I mean, for us, we want to we want pla we want uh, low cost filament. We're we're working with a Lyman filament extruder right now. We're we have yeah. done a partial prototype of that, so we're going to continue with that as well. That's for ABS, so it'll be maybe simpler or easier. But you guys have the high tech stuff, so I mean that would be extremely useful for us. And once again, to do the workshops where we run a workshop, people show up. We can, I mean, I could see people easily populating those kinds of workshops. We actually build your own mm -hmm. filament maker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did I did I send you the the image of the test cube that we just printed? A, a no. Bit ago? Show me. Yeah. Let me. Let's see. If I drag it into the the chat yeah. window. It, Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing we can do, like, I mean, just start getting all your current files over into FreeCAD. I mean, we've got a good FreeCAD team of people, so we can do that documentation from there. I mean, I don't know if you've looked at FreeCAD recently, but let's see here, it just you off. I think. I don't yeah. know What is going on with it? Yeah. Every time I try and drop something, oh wait, I know what it is. I know what it is. I need to put it. Here, I think. Let's try it. It's, it's every time I try. I'm not sure what's going on. Every time I every time I try and drop it into the. the uh, can you paste it in another document? Box, it, it just goes to the site on my on my. Um, yeah. Can you? Yeah, printed cube. Oh, you got it. Where? Where is it? Oh, maybe you didn't get it. Just a sec. I'm, I have to email it to you because every time I, I drop it into the chat box, it actually just um, it it goes to that file on my browser. Yep. Um, when are you getting back to the states? I'm getting so I fly out on the 29th. Um, and then I, um, yeah, and so I'll be there, you know, on the next day. Yep. Um, so, yeah, so I just sent you the picture of the cube in your email, and it took us a few days. That was, like, just before the diameter sensor burned out, and we uh -huh. got it going again. And now, like, the microscopes we're printing are, like, equally stunning sort of just yeah like <laughs> the quality is is i mean the way that the pet prints is amazing yeah yeah uh, and the other thing is like adhering to the bed mm -hmm. we control a filter so we print right on glass yeah and we can bond to the glass so well that the the print bed will come with the print when you remove the print if you want. <laughs> you can, you know, you just set your temperature right, and and you can you can get it to adhere however strongly you, you desire. Yeah, yeah. No, that's pretty cool. Very nice. Yeah. Well, I should get right here. But let's keep the ball rolling on this. Um, uh, I'll, is, do, I'll try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how how high a priority is to get FreeCAD files of the whole extruder system happening? Because we can do that kind of stuff. We can help um, you with that if you like. I mean, in order to make it shareable, that seems. It's a critical like, aspect. I mean, it's critical. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so. What I think will probably happen 
question is, you know, I have to discuss some more stuff with William. Um, but then what I, what I would hope is, yeah, that we just start marching on that, uh, on that, you know, just moving forward and, and getting that stuff up, stuff up there and have those drawings be part of the, you know, of getting our documentation going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, so you can set up, I mean, I recommend setting up a wiki, but I mean, you can also use someone else's wiki, like our wiki. I mean, that's that's what we do. We open source technology in our wiki or use Appropedia, which also uses media wiki. Uh, have you heard of Appropedia? Yeah. Yeah, so let's, um, yeah. let's see. I know Joshua Pierce uses Appropedia. Right. Quite a bit for, I mean, is it? I guess it's Appropedia. Is that one of his? Is that something he does, or is that something? No, that's somebody else. But he just publishes everything on App Appropedia. Um, uh -huh. But Appropedia's got a lot of stuff on there. It's um, primarily appropriate technology, like uh, whereas for yeah. us, it's like also for the we focus more on the Western world as well. Um, mm -hmm. So that's open source ecology is kind of like not just appropriate technology for the developing countries, but in general. I mean, that's just, to, yeah. But anyway, I mean, that, uh, Appropedia is a good place. Our wiki is a good place. I mean, until you get your own, but I mean, you can just set up presence on, on our wiki. It's, it's open for, open for edit and we'd love to have that kind of, uh, content on it. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so that'll be another thing to discuss with, you know, I'm sure everybody in, in our group will have their opinion on, where they want our files to be right uh, uh, let's see here yeah so yeah let's keep in keep in touch I mean so yeah, I'll let you know so, so I think as time you know because I don't want to I don't want to keep sucking up your time with with uh, stuff when when I actually am, don't have the time I, to, to put in you know to, to hold my, yeah. my side of the documentation uh go uh, up so so as when I get back to the states I think that's when I'm really probably going to be able to start moving on on some of this stuff and yeah and, um, but, uh, uh, on the on the on the the links that I that, that are in there with um, you know the revolver and so on yep a lot of that stuff is super old yep um, so yeah it um, <laughs> Yeah, I would just, you know, like if someone was going to say, hey, I want to build that thing, I would say probably not the one to start with. Right. Um, yeah, so, so anyhow, I'll, um, end of, end of November, I think, is probably when I'll be. be yeah, I mean, just to get your feet in the water here, I mean, think about, okay, what state of, the, of development is the filament maker in? And the width sensor to make good use of different filament, and then I mean, let's think about when we could organize a a build workshop. You know, where we invite a bunch of people, and that's as a revenue generating opportunity. That's great. Yep. Those would be some good questions to, to. Yeah, and especially like how how easily is your Film and width sensor adaptable to other 3D printers. Is that pretty easy to retrofit it to others outside of your own 3D printer? Oh, yeah. Any, uh, say any, any printer that's running on, you know, like a wrap wrap printer that's yeah. Marlin or whatever. I mean, just, basically, it's I've just edited Marlin a yeah. little bit. Um, and it, I mean, the, the width sensor, the original width sensor that that um, that I sent you that link for. Yep. Um, I would say for like for your ABS filament, yep. If you have limiter issues, uh -huh. the sensor that right off the shelf will work great. Although the problem is, is the actual sensor is discontinued. So, um, you know, that's. Do you have a good backup or no? I've been hunting for one, you know, and it's. I haven't found something, I haven't found a suitable replacement yet, although, okay, I'm not an electrical engineer, so, um, 
Okay. You know, so someone, someone with the right skill set may, you, you know, or, or at least more experience than, than I have in that area may be able to much more quickly mm-hmm. identify something. But, but uh, you know, again, like that's going to be one of those kind of painful next steps that we have to make. It's just... Right. Tell me. Can you can you brief me on what that issue is? I can ask some of our electronics people here. Uh, what is what is the sensor that you used before that we need a replacement for? Is it on the flipper? It is a. Let's see. I'll put it in. It's a. Uh, is that by flipper? Uh, so that's the sensor there, and it has been discontinued. It's a CCD array. Uh-huh. Um, and the, the kind of nice thing about it is that it's actually not super high resolution and it has a whole function so you can like read it and then go do other stuff and then come back and read it you know, and anyhow that it, it works out well with, with Arduinos that aren't you know super fast and don't have a ton of memory um, mm-hmm. and so and so I think the issue is like finding finding something that will work with one of those smaller, lower cost Arduinos. Uh, otherwise, what happens is like the cost of everything is kind of flying through the roof because you got a, a big sensor that's really high resolution and you need a really fast microprocessor with a lot of memory. <laughs> and so then prices just go up. Um, but maybe not. You know, I, like I said, I don't have. Um, you know, I'm definitely not an electrical engineer. Well, I mean, even Raspberry Pis are 25 bucks these days. I mean, so yeah, exactly. So maybe there's a, maybe there's a, but, a quick easy way to do okay. That. But I can look into that. I mean, we got OpenCircuitInstitute.org booting up. So yeah, um, cool. <laughs> uh, that's Shane. Oberlauer, one of our collaborators from actually from Dr. Pierce's group that's doing that, so I can check in with him on this. Yeah, uh, so, if he's so got a replacement another, for that. I think we can really collaborate is that, you know, I've been kind of getting my toes wet in a whole bunch of different fields, but I am definitely not an expert in any of them. Uh huh. So, so basically, they're, you know, say like, if you look at the the extruder, the circuit is on a breadboard still. You know, it's like <laughs> I just haven't had the time to learn how to draw that up in Eagle. You know, whereas I know there are a million people out there that could do that with their eyes closed. Um, you know, yeah. So, so definitely, there are a lot of areas in our project where we can use some some technical technical assistance on getting those sorts of things done. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, is the link I pasted the one that's relevant to that? Is that a filament sensor you've been working or building upon? Um, let's see. Oh, is it, did you paste it in the uh, yeah, chat? Yeah, in the box? chat. Yeah, and I've also wanted to reach out to. Uh, no, it's the remix of this one. Okay. Now. All right, man. Uh, but yeah, it was really good talking with you, Merchant. Okay. Okay. Well, keep going. We'll we'll touch base again when you got more time, and let's let's document this stuff. All right. Yeah. Sound. Okay. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.